Nerd Soul. Yeah, late ill kid at one young so holding it down, bringing that street geek and nerd soul. What is up, my people? Today, all oh, year, coming with another wonderful episode of That's Right. You best believe it. I ain't telling you no lies. I ain't playing no games. We are back. That's right. With anime ish, I'm chilling. It's you know what I'm saying. It's a beautiful Sunday. Hopefully, it's a beautiful Sunday where you are too. But it's beautiful out here. And I'm not by myself. I got someone who actually decided to step through. I'm going to throw over to the, the, the one and only Koopa Koopa. Hey, what's up? You hear me good on my C Mobile phone? That's right, C Mobile. You know, I got only a few minutes before, you know, Zoom like the hate, especially if it was video. Since I'm not right by my Wi Fi, I might park. Like, I'm actually in the car on my way to go slaying these wonderful black comics, manga, art by indie artists and various things mm-hmm. that'll pop up. So I was like, you know what? We skipped last week. And I always like to hear from my boy uh, Mike and Mark if he show up and whatever. Shout out to the rest of Anime Ish. Yeah, um, you know what I'm saying? To and to, to Ninja. Love Much it. love to them. Like we we make sure, you know what I'm saying? We make sure we, you know, show love. It's the it, it's the only way that we can do it. Um now Coop, he 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 dropped out for a little bit because you know what I'm saying, C Mobile be tripping. But I'm gonna I'm gonna throw it to one of his uh recommendations first. Hey. Well, it was it was kind of a recommendation. Um, he brought up an anime on Netflix called Uncle from Another World. And I'm going to say this. I, off top, I can't really recommend yes. this. But it's not bad. I mean, it's you got a little me? comedy in there. It's got a little comedy in there. <laughs> uh, it, it's, got some, it's got some unique, some unique moments between you know, the nephew and the uncle. You know, talking about his his past travails, if you will. You, you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I got you. Oh, sorry, sorry, I'm mad. But I'm not, I'm not mad. I'm not mad at the anime. I just, so you, so I think there's better out, better things out there to watch. The uncle from another world. world. See, let me, let me, let me pose it this way. Can I pose right. it this? Way? Po- pose, you. my brother. Yes, and, and you know what? Shout out to my homies, the bear and the beard. I've actually been trying to incorporate something that they say. I'm not mad at nobody who disagree unless they disrespectful. <laughs> Whatever recommendation I get. But I will say this. If you like a short, slightly zany, goofy anime, no strings attached. It's not going to beat your spirit up or whatever. <laughs> I definitely like Uncle from Another World. Now, I do have some things that uh, that may not be cool. Some I would say, I hate to say the word slight triggering, but I can understand why. Some of the etchy stuff is a little bit eh. Um, some of it's funny. Some of it is too much. Um, but overall, I like the concept. It starts off a little sad because uh, I don't know if you explained the premise of it yet. Have you? Oh, no. I have, I didn't explain the premise. I didn't explain okay. the premise. So. I'm going to give drop, the Drop elevator. that for people that might not know. <laughs> the premise is basically you have a, a man who wakes up from a 17 year coma 17 18 he basically wakes up as a middle-aged man but it's a reverse isekai what is a reverse isekai isekai is basically you go to another world blah 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 so he came back with his powers to wake up in his coma and the only person there to greet him was his nephew the rest of the family have written him off they were dead to him they were taking care of him and the grim dark nature of it is that they had a divorce because they were taking care of him you don't meet the mom you don't meet the, the mother-in-law all you meet is the nephew so the nephew had to go through this and endure this but it actually kind of finds uh a, a love and a respect with his uncle after he figure out what he went through in the other world and you get to see what happened via his memories through a magic spell like they were watching the dvd got rewind and all that even yep, got rewind. they got captions translations all that so it's it's a and it's a funny thing and the joke is that his uncle is a video game nerd to the fullest and i mean that just it is what it is he don't even care about nothing else and he loves sega he's a sega fanboy and he's out of touch with new technology so they play some of the your old gags up but he can catch up quick to to do what he need to do but yeah. it's like a sitcom in a way 
it's a sitcom framing around an action adventure comedy. If that <laughs> if that sounds crazy. Not and very, very light on the action adventure. Whenever something looks like it's about to get sweet, they undercut it with a joke. But because right. it is a comedy, but it does but because the joke is he's kind of overpowered, but then he just kind of deals with stuff. As of now, I think it's only 13 episodes. It went through some production hell because of COVID. <laughs> like it got up to seven. Netflix does some weird stuff when they own and the rights to anime. They can just hide it, block it, all this other bad stuff that take a second. So they, they finally don't released it. No, but they did really re release the rest of it and they got it all in dub. Mm-hmm. I watched the, most of it in sub. I like both versions of it. I say if you got time just to waste 13 episodes, 30 minutes, it's it can it can be background anime. It's not saying it's not fighting to be like oh the top tier or whatever conversation that people take too serious. It's just there. Yeah, it, it is. It's just there. But it is it's 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 semi entertaining. Like I wouldn't I wouldn't rush to watch it, but there is some cool stuff. I've watched uh Maybe like five episodes, and I was just like, go. I got. I, I was got, like, all right, you let got me go five. On. You got. I was like, let me go in and balance. I got. I got more things. I got better things to See, watch. You can, here's the thing: <laughs> you get old uncle from another world, just like your uncle at the barbecue. You want to just talk to him before you get on your nerves too much. You say hi, then you say bye. You eat a, you eat a burger with him, and then you bounce. That's all yeah. it is. I will say this. I'm going I'm to give a shout out to him, you know, taking it old school, you know, Sega Saturn and all that stuff in the 90s. Yeah, see? Because I'm, I'm going to give him this. Well, I'm going to give all old people this because young people can't wait to call somebody old. But young people also can't wait to rip off old things and pretend like they're new. So, yes. shout out to shout out to Uncle from Another World. Hey, and hey, look. They're like, yo, man, I'm playing Sega Saturn, man. I'm playing Knights of the Dream. I'm playing, uh, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm playing Daytona hey, USA. The man some love. Uh, give the show some love. He became what? What did he become when he got out to use his magical powers? A YouTuber. <laughs> he became yeah, he a did. YouTuber. Like, it's, do a, there's the mad show. stuff he could do. But homie came <laughs> like, out and was like, nope. yo, let me be a YouTuber. But he says some, he'll say, like, when he uses, like, he kind of is that nerdy guy that can be out of touch socially. But then he'll get it. He doesn't really get it with the ladies, even though a lot of ladies like him because yeah. he's just a goofball because he's so strong. And then he's actually a really sweet, nice, enduring guy. Because there's one scene where he say, even though I probably got picked on by the baseball players, yada, 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 I respect the hard work that they did to become what they are. Then he'll undercut it with like, yeah, like how I became a great such and such player on second Saturday. <laughs> oh, my family's like, oh, my God. I mean, be, becoming becoming a great player at a video game. I mean, becoming great at anything does take takes, skill. You know, what takes I mean? skill. So you he didn't want to. It does cheat. take skill. He could have win the baseball and explain all this, but also, let's just be honest. I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna give Mike some love on this. One reason why you don't do something too extravagant because it cuts down on animation. So if you have this framework where they just sit in a room and they look back and you save all the animation. And grandiose stuff of what he's doing on the other world when they show it. So you have this framework that probably works in an affordable budget. Yeah. <laughs> so it does, it does, it is smooth enough, but it is gag manga. So you don't have to do a lot when you're in the apartment. So you got to say that when he's doing stuff and, you know, if he's killing some monsters or something. It's a good background, good background anime. You know, don't take it too serious. If you drop in, watch an episode or two whenever you can. It doesn't require you to evolve your, you know, throw your life into, it. like, say, an Attack on Titan or something like that. That ain't necessarily for me. But yeah, I wa- I tried to watch one episode. I couldn't. I couldn't get through one episode. I was like, yo, I'm glad other people like it, but I'm out. And before I, you know, I know I can't stay too long. Now, can I switch gears and talk about a, a, a show that I had to throw myself into? I couldn't look away. And I'm not even, you know, I don't care if people think it's the best, this and that. It's another probably just short series. But it won't make you feel all light and happy or, or whatever. Um, I don't know if it's in dub, but I would say, you know, if, you, if you're into historical pieces a little bit, it's I, I watched Revenger also. 13 episodes. Mm-hmm. Um, it is a samurai flick. 
it's kind of in the period where I guess the English was smuggling or using opium to kind of take over some ports and get influence in uh, Asia. Oh, okay. So it is part has political historical background meanings into it. Nothing really supernatural. It's kind of grounded. Um, and this is the premise of it. Um, the Revengers are basically uh, hitmen that if you bite into a piece of gold before you kind of die or if you got a high grudge and you give them to it, no questions asked, they take care of it. That is some more and also it is some uh, religious tones to it too because each Christian church in Japan are the ones that's kind of over the revenge which is great mm -hmm. but also if y'all know some of the history before Christianity was widely accepted in Japan and Asia they were outcasts so it wasn't like you know if you were a Christian in, in some parts of Asia you get murdered like <laughs> you know that just wasn't gonna fly it, it start increasing more and more you know for yeah, various they won't, they won't play in no game you know even uh they talked about that in some like uh uh ninja scroll 2 where that was kind of the main villain one of the villains <laughs> was a christian <laughs> so which was wild if you ever see ever seen the ninja scroll series go back and watch that That's i just watched the first movie the second one looked like it was straight tridash so i'd say stay away from it right I disagree, but it's not the first one. But if you like some of this other weird history I'm talking about, that's what they touch upon. And it's, 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 it's not as good as the first one, the series or the second movie, but it's bizarre. Um, he says it's bizarre. <laughs> yeah, it's just, um, this one is not as bizarre. I mean, you know, one of the killers, I mean, he like, like they, it's, it's pretty, it's not, I don't know if it's listed as a shonen. I'm gonna say this. I will not call it a shonen. means you are a parent you know if you like you know you like your dragon ball z violence and blah 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 or your nine year old this and that this ain't that <laughs> like people are getting suffocated with gold mm. lack of the mouth before they die several times over or people getting strong with a kite and bloody or stabbed in the head with like you know how gambit throws playing not playing cards yeah okay there's a guy who can do stuff with gambit but his playing cards they're uh, that's what they call it I'm gonna mess up Hakafuda or something cards. It's those. Oh, yeah, cards. I know it's it. Yeah, yeah. Except his are lined with, I think, metal and sharpened steel. So he can literally throw right. it in somebody's head, like in the center, and kill them. That is okay. one of the stuffs that happened. Um, but it's not played for ha 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 play play. It's like <laughs> we got stuff to do. Um, but the main character is a samurai who got duped. Um, by his maybe his father-in-law or somebody else pulling strings, he had to get revenge, and then he winds up joining them. It's a little twisty, turny. Um, I'm not going to spoil it. Somebody don't want to see it, but it is akin to a Greek tragedy. Uh, okay, okay. So you, like it is very much. I might, a, I might peep that one. I might peep that one. Yeah, I, I might peep it. But I want, I want you to talk about an anime that I know I ain't going to talk about. <laughs> Which is Mashal. Mashal. Okay. Uh, and I'm gonna, and folks, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this. <clears throat> Hopefully, I don't drop out the match about to start going on my way. Much, <laughs> first of all, Mike ain't into it. I'm just gonna get that away. Mike say, ah, he, Mike was hate. Nah, he was, he was like, boo, boo. but <laughs> Mashal, like the name suggests, it is a combination of of muscle and magic or something like that and that's the character the character's name elevator pitch it is harry potter beats one punch man <laughs> and not the terrible season two one punch man uh so far but lead character if you're familiar with black clover um the lead character is in a magical world magic is everything he can't do magic but <laughs> magic is everything magic everything is everything they do like you know he's like i think 16 17 now so you know the perfect japanese story. age yeah. yes I don't, so he's almost an adult so he doesn't have to be too, he's not like a little kid but he's still a kid i uh, mean Mashu, he's definitely a kid he's definitely a kid Mashu isn't the brightest bulb in the pack that's just what it is mm, it's cold but no you know it's 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 a trait like they kind of gonna allude to this several times over but he's very much 
a good-hearted kid, but uh, the people who mess with him, he will say stuff like, I will send you to hell if you mess with my family. Literally one of the first lines in the movie. He, he is an adopted child by an older man who wasn't the best in the society of magic. And the way Masha works, it's, it's a play on the uh, mm. Harry Potter mark. But the more marks you have, it's usually the absolute berserk powerful people have three. Most people have one. <laughs> However, Masha has none. So when mm. he, he ain't got none. He has none, even though he's, you know, he is going to be special down the line in a way. Um, I haven't read enough to know exactly why, but it kind of is. Um, so if you don't have none in this society, you are an outcast. You, they, they will weed you out. They, can, they will want to kill you because they are on some, I hate to say, eugenics type stuff. You know, this is kind of based in European lore. So, and let's face it, just like Harry Potter, if he was a muggle, what do they think of you? You were dirty, unclean, yep, and you wet. So, if you can't, if you are a muggle in their world or powerless, you know you really don't need to be showing your face, and you damn sure don't really need to be mouthing off. Mm. So, episode one, this is basically the setup. I know Mike didn't watch it. Episode one is going to set up into what goes on to the real plot of it. Well, I mean, I watched, I watched a little bit of episode one, but I was just like, yeah, it's not. Funny. So, Mash has a weakness for cream puffs. It's a, it's a running thing, I know. That's like the only food you kind of see him eat other than his protein shakes and whatever. <laughs> he, he's a workout a holly that his uh dad, his step, you know, his adopted dad told him to do. He's like, I know you can't do magic. He said, I'm not that good at magic. I'm kind of weak myself. And his dad used to be of a, I think, kind of a lower noble clan, but he was not that good, so he kind of got booted out. So he, he found Mashal along the way of after he got uh, kicked out of his family home. And he was just a baby by himself crying. So he took him to live with him deep in the woods to be hit. Long story short, Mashal, being a, a dumb dumb, walks out into the city to go get some cream puffs on sale. Gets caught by mm, the Not on sale, police. though. <laughs> yeah, on sale. And one of the magic police who's basically like one of my fellow like my fellow government workers, wants to get money, wants to get raised. <laughs> they want to get a raise. They want to get recognition. So he figures out that, okay, Mash doesn't have a thing, but he's ungodly strong because this guy named Brad can technically was, is a, I guess, a pretty decent wizard, magician, or whatever. He was like, I couldn't even phase you. He said, but you know what? This is what I'm going to do. If you don't want to keep getting hunted, hunt, hunted, we'll hunt you down or I'll let people know, even though Mash can kill me, but you he was like, I need you to enter into this magic school. I will back you. And if you are accepted as the top student or whatever they call it, like the visionary of the year, so that means God accepts you and therefore society will have to accept you. So uh. it's, it's very, like, you, we've seen this story before. He's kind of the underdog. Um, I forgot what my friend told me, but it's a, it is a trope called the other or the something. Basically a person in a world with all these powers exist they don't fit the standard but they're somehow able to overcome it through yeah. whatever means he's possible. rock lee if naruto was about him yes he is rock lee if rock lee was the star it really hurt people which rock lee do really hurt people but rock lee can't Yo, rock lee ain't no joke on this on the sneak but everybody else the joke with rock lee is that rock lee is the only true ninja in a world full of wizards <laughs> so there you have it so I think if you like some of the offbeat nature of say One Piece Man, I mean one point one piece one piece man, one punch man <laughs> or one piece. Uh you like some comedy, but if you like some action to go with it, you will get action in this. It ain't going to be overly deep because it's going it is a shonen battle shonen by nature. The wizards are gonna have to show each other who's the boss. The goal is going, you know, to be the best. And really, Mashal's goal is to keep my family safe. But you know, usually these things are going to be overarching prophecies and all this other stuff. So mm. it's not hard to figure out what's going to come or stuff that you've seen before. Kind of like in Yu Yu Hakusho, kind of like in Naruto. You know, like even in My Hero. So I would say give it a chance, give it a try. 
man, if you don't, you know, if it's not for you, they got plenty of things coming out in spring 23, but this is kind of one for all age, like, you know, in your typical shonen age where it may not be too bad for a kid to watch it. Alright, no doubt, no doubt. Alright, now we got another young brother to come through. I want to give a shout out to Mark Dub. You know what I'm saying? He's Boom! Out. Guess who stepped in the room? Ted Good morning, hey. y'all. Hello, everyone. It's Mark Dub. Part man, part dog. It's my heart for hearts made fun. That's love. That's right. You know what I'm saying? Believe that. I'm in this thing. I hear Coop talking about new uh anim- anime. Yeah, he's talking about Masha right now. I'm about to jump on it, Coop. I'm gonna jump on it. Now I'm gonna like, throw I'm gonna throw Coop another another uh another bone right now. Coop told me that uh he told me about Gundam. He told me about uh oh, yeah. uh Witch from Mercury. The Witch from Mercury. All right, I'm gonna say this now. And I started I started watching. I started watching. Do you like it? Well, I mean it's giant robot, so I'm gonna give it a chance no matter what. Say so, um, I, I like that, Mike. I like that. <laughs> is it, whenever it's giant robots, I'm okay. I'm definitely at least going to take a okay, peek. See, 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 y'all. I try to actually, you know, I don't try to make Mike. I don't try to go too out of out of pocket with Mike. I know, not like Nagatoro never gonna be his thing. I just do it to do it. But like, I throw Mike a bone. I'm gonna still, I'm gonna still watch Nagatoro sooner or later. <laughs> you ain't got to. You ain't got to. Like one day, one day when I'm like. When I've watched everything, I'll be like, all right, let me check, let me check that episode. I'm gonna know, Mike, man. Mike, know. Look, look, so so Coop and I have been have been rehashing Nagatoro when I kick it with him. Uh cause 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 I love it. I love it. <laughs> but I love it because oh he my looks, goodness. Some of it is really, really like Mark it's, it's, it's touch and hold. Relates to it. <laughs> it's touch and hold. It's not gonna touch hold for you in the same way. <laughs> but I will say this: The Witch of Mercury, though, y'all. If y'all, you know, there's plenty of Gundam out there. There's a Gundam for everybody. There's man, Gundam there is. Man, everybody. Gundam got about you get a 165 Gundam. series, bro. I haven't really dug into a Gundam series since G Gundam. I know, y'all. That's old. I'm, 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 I'm getting up there. That was the last one that I really, really watched. I know there's been tons of other stuff like orphan blood a lot of people talked about you know there's always the classic the gundam wing there's the original there's a there's at least two three gundam classics that popped up on adult swim and slash tsunami that really brought gundam back in fact just a little side note there's some good documentaries about how gundam got popular in the west adult swim is a major key of that gundam wing and g gundam really 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 helped to that yeah if y'all want to you know but definitely go look up the history of Gundam. one of the longest running brand slash series it has multiple series yeah it's probably yeah. one of the longest brands because gundam has like what like six or seven shows like i would say it got like more. 10 movies like it, 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 it has more <laughs> Like it got stuff I remember five. seeing Gundam when I was young, so it's it's like pretty Gundam long running. It's from the seventies, like yeah. so mid, yeah. mid late seventies, to be honest. But far as a modern Gundam, like they've been modernized a little bit with different stories. And Gundams, like all the stories aren't connected. A lot of them are self-contained, so you don't, you know, they have some that connect to the overarching lore, or this and that. Or now that it's been running so long, you can use what was established in the first series as this is the world. That's just it. It's kind of bleak. Don't be full, you know, don't be sleeping out here. You know, it's yeah. like, they they highly advanced, but this is what I love about Gun. And I think Mike has alluded to this, like, you know, you know how these on the sci-fi series think we're gonna be in flying cars and we're gonna just have a magic kill that make our life happy, blah blah blah. Gundam. You might have some of those things, but guess what? You still got you got war, you got yeah. political unrest, civil unrest. You got mm-hmm. deceit, you got corporate uh, thievery, corporate espionage, and this is where we're at with this gun. Very high on the corporate side, but the corporations slash planets or whatever are pretty much like you can still say they're the harbingers of war. They they make the weapons. They uh, you know, they might go to battle with different things. Earth 
and the Spaceians do not like each other, but they're kind of at a Cold War or peace. Kind of, sort of. <laughs> so that the Spaceians are basically a bunch of the bougie ruling class that don't pretend to be a ruling class. They like the rich people in America. Like you, and, you, and, you are earthy. You have a chance to do something with yourself, but don't get it twisted out here. Like you are behind the eight ball, and yeah. they do not want you to have. Weapons. They'll they'll let one of you up every now and then to put you on the brochure. You just know, to say that it's possible when they know that it's man, really not. that sounds familiar. Right. Man, look, look, let's keep it real. So, <laughs> and and now the only thing that scares the ruling class, and there's a prologue. Shout out to our homie, uh, Alok Camp Camp, as we call him. He put me on this. Got him to thank for this. That this is right up his alley too. It's a sci-fi space AI, and Gundam is just one of those things. Like the lead character Saletta, um, or or you could say the, the young lady from Mercury. I if I mispronounced it, I love this. Yeah, because the names are the names are always hard to pronounce because you know it's not our language, but you know we and, good. And I'm gonna say this: I love this character, and I know this is gonna sound weird. She kind of reminds me of my mom in a way, because my mom is a country girl. She Mercury is technically supposed to be like, even though it's space. It ain't the rich, it ain't the overly rich part of space. Like, they ain't, like, the top tier of the spaces. You know, they kind of like, you know, you a bumpkin. My mom is a country mm-hmm. girl, but she's nice. She's kind of, like, she's a genuinely a good, sweethearted person. And, you know, just wants to do good. But everyone around her got some, got some dirt on. Got, got something going on. We don't exactly know. Like that's kind of in the background in the beginning of the series. You think it's gonna be a regular Gundam series? They just they are battling, you know the love stuff. Eh, I ain't even gonna worry about it. I mean, bottom line is I'll save y'all the drop the drama. I'm yes, this is gonna be a little you know if this ain't your type of thing, if that bothers you, the love stuff might bug bug you. But the two main ladies are probably going to be the love interest. But that ain't the main point right now. It, it starts off that way. It makes you look one way, and it's starting to look the other way. Like, the mm. politics of Gundam is highly important. What's going on between the Earthians and Spaceians, vastly important. In fact, the first half of the season, oh my god. How much did you watch, Mark? I mean, uh, Mike? I watched the first, uh, well, I watched the prologue and I think the first two episodes. Okay. Uh, so, so you watch yeah, thing, so you so you you get the the tension already. <laughs> yeah. But honestly, I I enjoy, I like the show and I like where we're going. But I actually don't like the time jump. I would have I would have been gotta, I would have been interested in seeing what this 4-year-old girl can do and how I, she grows. I, but I'm pretty sure we're going to get some kind of cut back to what happened but yeah. I would have actually liked to deal with that. Like let her I her got some let, her, let her let her do her thing. I would have been like, yo, this is a different twist. I was like, when we jumped forward, I was like, oh, we're high school kids in high school again. Okay, so no problem. Thank you, Japan. All right, let's go. I was like, so that was kind of like the boring part to me. But you know, it's giant robots, it's military sci-fi. So I'm always gonna be give it a shot. Very military, but also when you gotta go to action and gun them, it ain't like you know you ain't gonna be no shinjis. I don't want to get in a robot. No, you getting in that robot. Like you better, if you don't get in the robot, you get murdered. I promise you. Like especially with the terrorism in Gundam, like the they're 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 like it's my hero in a way in a way that you got to <laughs> But in my hero, it took a while before the ter- the bad people came. Now nah, the bad people are already there. In Gundam. They're the people training you. They're the people you live with. They're oh, yeah, they they got people. Man, this sounds this they got people sounds dueling so in giant it's, robots. And I'm like, a, uh, what irresponsible adult is letting kids like in in giant like, robots? And who and has all? The, where is all this money coming from? All I know in Gundam, you better learn to either learn to fly that robot, or you better learn to build them and learn how to service them. That is what one or two or the other, or you better be rich. 
<laughs> like ain't no ain't no in between. Cause I'm looking at this, I'm like, who like who has the money for all this? And then also there's this big thing, and of course I'll probably miss some subtext or something. But they're talking about uh Saletta's um like uh Gundam. And they're like, you're not allowed to have a Gundam. And it's like, but all y'all got Gundams. I mean well, I mean, unless unless you're going to split hairs and say, oh, this isn't a good... It's like, it's, well, it's like someone saying like, oh, no, I have a Honda Civic. You have a Honda Accord. It's like, stop it, man. Look, we yes, have cars. We are, we're like, stop, hairs, stop fronting like this. Like, you ain't using this, a Gundam. This is what they... This is to set the story up a little bit more. A Gundam in this world, the technology was banned because it was basically eating and killing like killing the the pop so even though these people let you giant fly murderers giant robot weapons they want their pops to stay alive <laughs> and also that most people who even run the corporations are gundam pilots like they can jump in a gundam and watch you too so they're <laughs> like this technology is terrible it might kill us uh you know they like it's so bad they didn't even want to waste the don't think they did it because they care about humans. They did mm -hmm. it because they are afraid of it. And it's like they don't have no way to control it. So basically the people who created it or is using it, like, and it does affect you. The only person who isn't affected is Suleta. Like, you know, it's kind of like slightly akin to what happened in Cyberpunk, but not as bad. I don't think we're going to see people getting cyberkosis where it just, you know, Cyberpunk, you ain't have a shot. But Cyber psychosis, if, man, that's crazy but you like every time if you if you use a gundam too much and you can't handle it it will probably just kill your heart you know you just pass out you die whatever brain dead like it's taking you to a realm that your mind can't conceive because i guess the way they explain it your body is because your mind is merging with the robot and you have to like you're basically absorbing all that and your mind just ain't supposed to be able to take it Whatever happened with that little girl and the letter, I, we don't know. We'll know eventually. I, I got a a terrible feeling. Like, I feel like Gundams ain't... I don't think no Gundam leave you every... Ha there is no happy ending to a Gundam show. Like, the regular kind. Like, if it's political space drama, expect to, to leave a little disturbed. <laughs> so... Cause the, it's like, the, the very few episodes I've watched, yep. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not gonna be pretty it's not gonna be pretty uh just know end of the first mm. third by the time you reach episode 13 oh yeah like you're gonna have a good feeling of what's going on in this world each episode makes you want more and more and more to find out more what's going on in this current iteration of gundam and why life is what it is uh, i highly highly recommend it as a part of the returning anime of uh, spring. So yeah, like I'm, I'm definitely down with it. I, I didn't know Gundam had a new series. Um, I actually just finished watching uh Gundam uh Hathaway like the other day. So that's another that's another Gundam movie that's on Netflix. And the way that ended was they they kind of wrapped that up in a bow. But the good thing about Gundam is you can have these different periods of history and these different periods of time where you tell these different stories and it's still all part of the same, you know, still all part of the same universe. Um, and if it's not the exact same Hathaway universe, was crazy dressing, with the animation. The dressing of the universe is still the same. Um, and if anything, there's always that one Gundam design that kind of prevails. Even if it yep. changes a little bit, you get, I don't know what they call it. Is it the Gundam unicorn or Something you either gonna get the unicorn or like the oh, angel or whatever. You're gonna get yeah. some versions of those, at least those two. Like you may not get like the original, you're like, you know, the evil villain with the one's eye cyclops. <laughs> you know, you don't see them anymore, but you'll see all these other wild designs or whatever. And Gundam, there's just no imagine there's no limit to the imagination what they do with these robots, the colors, the style. Yeah. And one thing I like. I think Gundam, and I told Mark this, it still has certain sounds in Gundam when they fire up and when they shoot. It has been it. a consistent sound. It's almost Star, Star Wars-esque. Yeah, yeah. A phaser 
or they laser gun has a Tran transformer gundam. esque. Yeah, transformer it's a, transformation esque. It well, it's a certain Gundam laser sound that you can recognize always in a Gundam series. How they shoot, it's even in the video game. How they yeah. die, how they explode, and how they shoot. I was like, oh, I remember that. Yeah, it's like they still got them. They've been using them sound since the seventies. They clean it up, but they like this is. I yeah, you gotta keep, you gotta same. keep that audio identity. Yeah, they keep the audio identity because the visual visuals change, y'all. Visuals will change. Even Oculus Prime, the men, he done been a fire truck. He done been a semi truck. He done been a I don't know a tank maybe <laughs> or, or or Megatron has, but they still have to transform the, the the sound when they transform. Yeah, and most of them they still got that sound. So. Just shout out to them for that, and um, I, I appreciate them. For that. You gotta give you gotta give those people something to remember, and like, see, with me, I had the last thing I had watched is like, maybe like uh, there was a maybe Gundam three on Netflix or something like that. I watched like a little bit of that. Um, I need to finish Evangelion or whatever on Netflix as well because I never watched that in totality. I will watch the fight scenes over and over, but I actually never watched the story. But um, that is <laughs> on hilarious. To, on to Witch from Mercury. Well, I I knew this. There was this kid that I went to school with that had like this VHS tape with like all the fight scenes from uh, Evangelion. So I would just watch them joints like over and okay. over. Okay. Shouts out to the VHS. But <laughs> so you seen all the fights with Evangelion, but you don't. You've never seen the story. Yeah, I really don't. I, so I was like, I saw it on Netflix. So I was like, let me go on and watch this. Okay. You know what I'm so I've watched a couple of episodes. But a... on to which I <laughs> I'm I'm here for it. I of course I'm kind of tired of the kids, but I, I would have loved <laughs> I would I would have loved to follow that young four year old and see kind of how the mother with the four year old, like, you know, like, just like um if if you're tired of kids in Japan, then you need to stop anime right now. Well, no, that's not true. That's not specifically <laughs> true. Um, I'm going to talk. I'm going to end off our podcast with Hell's Paradise, and there ain't no kids in that. Fair enough. Uh, so, I do want to watch. I, I I seen a video just now. I do want to watch Hell's Paradise. Yeah, I know what it's about. So that that joint is fresh. But I'll I'll wrap up like with with which from uh, Mercury. I'm still down. I don't like the Academy type thing. <laughs> but you got military sci-fi yeah. and you got giant robots, so I'm willing to stick around for a couple of more to episodes. Be, to be honest, the best thing they did for, I guess, for somebody who, with that criticism, as we know, as you watch it, the, the Academy, it matters. But the Academy, <laughs> don't, don't get it twisted. I can see that Academy being destroyed one day. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, maybe, but I just I like when people do twists on stuff. Like even like Black Lightning, for for instance, in Black Lightning, even though the last season was straight, you know, what I'm I saying? still like good heaven. <laughs> um, it was nice to see a hero that had responsibilities. Mm -hmm. He had kids. He had like a job where where he was kind of like the surrogate father as a principal of other kids. Yep. He had a he had sort of a wife. I mean, she was divorced, but she wanted wife privileges. You know what I'm saying? It, he had real things going on. It wasn't someone who's like, I'm single with no girlfriend or no boyfriend or whatever, and I can do what I want. No, he had people that he had to like, answer. He had people that he had the obligation of keeping safe. Not like yes. I have to keep the city safe. No, he had like close people to him. I mean, the whole show sets off because his daughters don't listen to him. He like, yo, don't go to that party. And then they go and it makes him have to get back in the game. I like, you know, different takes. Cause I mean, we always, we always dealing with the kids or in this case, let's go with the even younger kid. How would a toddler deal with this? Like even when in the prologue, when she's blowing up the ship, she was like, look at the candles. It's like, those ain't candles, baby. <laughs> like, like nah, those ain't no candles. <laughs> nah, that's that's two dead people. <laughs> but, yeah. But just I, you know, just twist twist it a little bit, change it a little bit. Like I know there's I a got point, but sometimes one, the formula gets boring. I got one prediction, I think, and that's what I think what you're gonna get a lot in which I think her mother isn't her mother. Oh. And there's one line, you'll hear it. That she says it by the time when when this when everything start popping off a little bit, it kind of they middle of the road season 
half season finale or the first core finale if you will because they do it with the anime um i don't think that's her mother her real mother i, I just don't she don't do she look okay the same from no nope. well, i mean i guess you know may, i was figuring maybe you know she got her dad's you know kind of face or something i don't know but i know people can change their hair i just think it's something that it be just when i heard her say it even though she has the, the robot arm like her mom that you see and maybe so but i don't know maybe maybe it's just maybe it's a mistranslation i'm missing but if it ain't if that is her mom i will say that she's gonna butt heads with her mom one day when she when unfortunately the poor child loses her innocence because she's such a sweet innocent person but yeah. she does fly a giant killing machine and she's good at it <laughs> she's extremely she's good extremely good at it hey don't mess but with yeah, the like, girls y'all the country I'll, girls I'll, sweet till they bite till they bite I'll say, you know, definitely I recommend it. You know what I'm saying? It's 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 a good watch. So I'll I'm be a, checking I'm, out the witch from Mercury, certainly. That's right. <laughs> so let's let's flip flip it to the last one on, on the docket. Hell's Paradise. Oh yeah. I'm gonna say it sounds like a Guns N' Roses song from 1992. <laughs> All right, um, I'll give you I'll give you the premise. This is what this is the premise that you know uh, that uh, Crunchyroll and everything get. Gabby Maru is a ninja on death row with one chance to see his wife again by finding the elixir of immortality on a supernatural island and delivering it to the Shogun. Standing in his way are his fellow convicts and fearsome beasts that roam the island, devouring or killing anyone. They encounter. Now it's like anime suicide squad. Yo, gap yo, all right. So Mappa, I'ma say this. On the first epi- episode, I really wasn't that impressed. I was like, yo, Mappa, what's going on, man? I thought we was cool. I was like, yo, Mappa, I thought I thought we was down, man. It seemed like y'all slipping. Mike. I was like, I'm gonna give y'all three, another episode, but I mean three y'all... episode rule, y'all. Anime is people who listen. Say it with me now. Ninja established it. Three episode rule. And I'm going to I'm going to push back and say if we all know that we're in a microwave society, if we all know our time is tight, if we all know that all of us have things to do and tons of stuff to we watch, know you but somehow need they to don't grab know, someone's attention immediately. They position it that way. I don't know why, Mike. I don't right. know why they do you, ain't, you ain't got no time. You got to grab people's attention immediately. Now, <laughs> the first episode, I was like, mm, "Okay, I guess." But the second episode, though, no, this took the second episode. Uh, Gabby Maru came through. Boy. I feel like if you like it this much, I'm oh, it's action. You. Oh, it's gonna be some fight. Oh, okay, all right. Oh, it's gonna be. Oh, it's gonna be blood. Do not bring the kids. I go. Right? I saw one scene. Uh, shout out to this YouTuber. I ain't gonna say his name, but one of my favorite YouTubers. Um, I watch. I mean, a lot if, he of go, if, if the YouTuber is cool, go and give him a shout out. Okay, you know, ain't gonna hurt my like, feelings. You know, Mother's Basement, uh, one of the few people that I've, I, I've, I've unsubscribed to a lot of YouTube people. He ain't with too much of the typical YouTuber reviewer stuff. You know, mm, some, mm. but he actually tries to be watchable. <laughs> you know, but but information-wise, he covers it all. And he kind of, and I shout out to him, he came up with the Senpuku squad, basically Suicide Squad for anime. And he's like, yeah, this guy here is like, he showed one scene. He'll show clips of it. Well, I guess the hero, I can't say his name. Uh, I'll learn it. But he, he like was tied, had his hands tied by his back. And he like killed a few people with just his feet and his head. And, yeah, and yo, dude got, off. dude got McNasty on. They, they basically like- they basically had a whole bunch of like people on death row fight it out to the death. Homie's head, homie had his hands tied. He was kicking people's throats out. Biting and them, yeah, I them would the, compare the chest like homie is on another level. And Mark, you'll like this. He kind of looks you if y'all watch Watchmen or Red Watchmen because the movie and eh, the show is great, but the movie was a eh. hint. But uh, if the you know, uh, some help. the guy, uh, what's his name? Um, Horshack, yeah. remember the, the, the scene in jail where he's like, Y'all in here with me? This is kind of yeah. to that because he looks True. like a little, he looks, he's a little white haired. 
you know, soft face looking guy, uh, till you piss him off. Oh my god. What yeah, he was doing he, in the scene? He's like, <laughs> I don't really want to kill nobody. Then he like, I'm gonna kill you. He's like, oh, if you're gonna kill me, I guess I gotta kill you. And then <laughs> <laughs> He go from I don't want to kill nobody, but I'm about to kill everybody so he, in this mother. <laughs> bro, he did it with his head tied and run like he did it while in bondage and what was washing them up. Like he no, this wasn't no. even with his sword. I don't know what he do with his yeah, sword. Yeah, he had no sword. Oh, you ain't <laughs> seen his sword work. Oh no, my god. I haven't even seen his sword work. Man, oh, oh Mappa came through. Mappa, thank you. Thank you very much. Because the first episode, I was like, I thought y'all was tripping. I thought maybe y'all was using y'all like y'all bench warmers or something, but y'all came to play. And I, you know what I'm saying? I, I appreciate that. So see, um, Mike, maybe I got some theories. Three episodes this time. It took I, two. It took thank two. you. You know what I'm saying? I, I got theories about this Suicide Squad. I got theories about him and his wife. I got theories, but I ain't going to drop those because I don't think Mark has watched yet. So, you know what I'm saying? I'm I, oh, but I'm watch. jumping I, on. I, I got to jump watching. on that one. That, that's some today action. Yeah, it's like, unfortunately, so, we got to watch the sub instead of the dub. So, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to say, and I'm going to say that for real because look, sometimes I need to multitask and sitting down and like reading every line of dialogue. Sometimes it's easier to just listen to it because I speak English, I don't speak Japanese. So, yes, I would prefer to have the dub on this, but bruh, when you got time to actually lock in and read, because you know, you will be reading. You know, yes. when you have time to lock in and read this joint, it, it represents. You know what's funny? The through line of this episode of anime ish, all thought provoking anime that's going to leave you a little uh, <laughs> feeling away. You better come in high. If yep. you watch Revenge Hell's Paradise, and which, which of Mercury will bring you down? Too yeah, much. you'll be kind of, you'll be kind of okay. Yeah, in just... the middle. You go, ha- you'll have that like, ooh fact that it, it, by episode 12 13 it's gonna bring you back yeah because people I'll be trying to pro- pull coups and and like kill people on boats and, i mean on ships and stuff it's like you know hey. revenger uh this is just one episode is i mean everybody there's somebody it's revenger is pretty much like an old kung fu flick like one of the old serious ones wow it, other anime, like your people are dying people are paid to get got mm. people are miserable <laughs> <laughs> people are hooked on opium. <laughs> uh, uh, they call this, that hopium. You know what I? They, you know what I just they, thought they about? On hopium. About like old school, sort of like anime and old school infused. Like I guess, I guess you could say kind of like translations and retellings. I wonder, is there or is there, has there ever been? pretty much an anime retelling of all the Wu-Tang films. Because it seems like a slam dunk. I'm going to say no. You got like, you got, you know what I mean? You got, what, the Wu-Tang series has like, are you, what, like 12 movies? You mean like Wu-Tang and, the Sha- and like the Shaw Brothers stuff? Yeah, like Wu-Tang versus Shaolin. You well, have, um, you have, uh, you know, the, um, I'm going to say think of no, the names no, there. And not to be that guy, but just because since that's mostly Chinese, Japanese probably didn't animate it because they generally, even back in the old day, they kind of also were racist to the Chinese too. So they'll have Ch- Chinese people looking like savages too, as yeah. well. So but I mean, it's not China like thing. people in China can't draw. I mean, they, but they, they I'm, kinda, I'm, sure they, I'm sure they got animation studios in China. I mean, I assume so. Yeah. I mean, they kind of getting, but they kind of catching up now to putting out their stories more in mass for their stuff, like in the last 10 years. So it might happen. Like they're kind of doing stuff like that, but you know, I don't think Japan is ever going to do it. Like Korea probably would do it before Japan. Mm. And Korea, yeah, like Korean and China, are, like doing more of their myths and stuff now, getting it out there in their animation companies. Because a lot of the Japanese animation you see, a lot of Korea people, Korean companies have have worked on it. So yep. it's it's merging. I know there's still some people out there be like, well, anime must be from Japan. Eh, I get it. Most of your anime is not from Japan. I'm just well, half it. of it, like a good chunk of it is from Korea. <laughs> so deal with it. And a lot of it's going to start coming from China. So, also, don't forget, some of that stuff is coming through India, too. Exactly. So, like, it comes so this, to- this whole idea that you think is like all based in Japan, you can forget that. Yeah, that, that has that stopped in the 80s. 
probably mid 90s late 90s definitely through the two about 2005 when boondocks and them were being created by a korean studio i believe you know and for people like i still see this I, I i don't even click on these sorry side note i'm so tired of people asking is boondocks an anime yes it's an anime y'all yeah it's, it's an anim it's anime produced this anime they just they just don't want it to be anime because black people are stars in it That's it's just actually really subbed in japan and shown in japan yeah, it's, it's clearly it. an anime because anime is really only a style animation is the medium so it's in the style of thank anime. you mike it's clearly it's clearly in the style of anime but i know it's black people so people get their backs up whenever so black is in the lead yeah. so that's what it's really about anime slash animation is a medium so there you have it it is a anime folks just like avatar is yeah. you know if it ain't anime it's anime inspired y'all we're we're forty plus years old, and we have adapted to this new way of thinking. Also, I mean, it's very it's very clear that Avatar is an anime. It's so very clear. I, even I, even uh, Legend of Korra is very clear. Like, come on, man, it's not that stuff. When you got like so, what like Kim Jong Ji or whatever, or and you got like Phil Barusa working on that stuff, it's bro, it's an anime. Man. It's, it's just it's I don't understand people twenty you are about fifteen years younger than us get stuck in it and I mean maybe they just discover it and somebody told them or they they hang with a lot of <laughs> dusty chans who tell them the wrong thing. Well but people just, oh, people like to gatekeep and they don't really have a lot of power in their own lives. So the only real power they have is online, you know what I'm saying? And they can scream to the rooftops and be like, no, I'm the I'm the person who says what this is and this isn't. It's like it's it's clear that this is this. It's like you can so, it's clear to see that this is what this is. I just, you know, I just wanted to address that, like, like, yeah, I turned forty-two this year. Mike is, 40, I'll be forty-one. So, if we could get this concept, I need younger people to get this concept. I'm glad. I'm glad Coop only only mentioned you guys' age, as I am. I said forty. Much older than y'all. <laughs> I'm Dusty. I'm, I'm, I'm just Dusty <laughs> Chan, just because I'm old. Nah, nah you ain't. Got, you got nah, uh-uh. You you actually took a bath today. You so took you a bath. Dusty I bath in the morning for the pop up. Uh -huh. yeah. And I took a bath. No, you don't. Not dusty. We you know might be. Saying? We might be crotchety. We might be old. We might be stubborn. We ain't no dusty chain. Yeah, when <laughs> when you when you come to the event and I look at them ankles, it better not be no dust on. You know what I'm saying? When I look at them kneecaps, better not be no rust on them. Well, at least or at you least know? they gonna be covered. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? At least cover up that stuff. If you got a, if you got a mouth, use a little lotion, a little moisturization. Mm -hmm. You know, that's all we're asking. Since, since we've already, don't be I've already in, in, in real life, but don't be dusty in personality. Thank be you. Be like you know Mike. Buy, buy some fresh shirts from the Blurted Shaw store, and you know, be straight for your your cons and your events. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. By going to get some shirts from Blurtish, you know what I'm saying. Get, get <laughs> hey, some they, they so fresh. You, can be fresh. you may as well. Yeah, sale coming, sale coming next week. Or we hey, you know, you know when that shirt you wearing is too old. You know that you know the neck of that shirt is all worn out. Throw that thing away, get a new one. You know what I mean? Man, so, if your look. neck shirts, if the neck is worn out, y'all, I don't care if you skinny, chubby, fat. Throw that shirt. Oh, don't get, if you get it out, get out of there. Use it for the gym. Yeah, on gym the only. You know what I'm saying? Cut grass in only. It. Cut grass in it or something. Or that shirt needs to be downgraded. Out. You know. You what know. What I'm is it just, that's just wild to me. But. <laughs> so yeah, I'll leave, before we sign off, I'll leave, I'll leave it off with this. People, especially for all my dusty chans out there, y'all know who y'all are. Y'all, y'all usually dusty. out there. Y'all out there. Y'all got these, y'all got these hyper like uh gatekeeping ideals about whatever, whether it's manga, comics, anime, whatever it is, it's gotta be your way and no no other perspective matters. And y'all dusty and y'all funky. Y'all come to the y'all come to the events, dust it up, wearing old yes. shirts. It's supposed to be a black shirt, but that thing looked like deep I'll gray. Just say this. Like, <laughs> look, take a bath, all right? And when you get out of the bath, take lotion. No, you know what? Don't use lotion because lotion be having and alcohol in it. It's gonna dry you up. Take some cocoa butter or some shea butter and moisturize your whole body. All right, not just moisturize that whole situation. Your whole hey. body. And right. be open to ideas. You can like, be me clear. And, me and Mike don't agree on everything, but we're willing to listen and just say our point civilly. 
people yeah. just take it too point to the point of you know nothing. It's like oh my god. Y'all. Also, Keith doesn't have an old do rag that looking like it's been chewed uh, up by yeah. a dog. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just, <laughs> let's move on. <laughs> man, dust the chains, man. Dust the <laughs> dust. Right, so like, I'm gonna throw <laughs> Mark and the Dusty. Oh, oh boy, I'm gonna throw dust it to the Mark. Chan uniform. Bro, it's gonna be some dudes. They looking uh, at themselves in the mirror with they do rag. Right. You know what? All right, yeah, yeah, you I came think outside with that on, I'm man. Saying, I'm gonna say this, bro. <laughs> I don't know why in the me. I'm gonna say this. I've seen those pictures of a lot of other cats. Maybe not recently. Maybe recently. I don't know. I ain't gonna go into it specifically. But I've seen. Cat- what is it with cats? Like the one black dude that'll be at a comic book store or whatever. There's always a cat with a do rag, and he think he like looking like uh, what's his name? From Empire with that that do rag, I'm Aaron Chow. <laughs> like Looking why is like it that? Why the last Yu Gi Oh player? Yeah, oh, bro, I, was at a, I was at a <laughs> store. Shout out to uh, Anubis Games. I met this, this cat. He was a nice guy, but he was just first of all he was disrespecting himself, disrespecting me, and I told him I said it nice. And he was, you know, he was the only one. We were the only ones in there. He was using a certain word that we never use on Blurtish because that's what we choose to do. You know, I ain't knocking nobody who do it. However, damn sure don't do that mixed company. That's me being old. Yeah. But I, at the same time, you do it in front of me, I'm going to tell you. I'm going to politely pull you to the side. I'm like, bro, can you not do that while I'm right here? You can do that with there. I know these might be your friends, but if you yeah. watch Cole, but you be the first, But you be the first one to get mad if somebody call you that. But so if you stop watch Bel Air... Consequences, actions have consequences. Be- review of Bel Air coming soon. Uh, second season, been great. So I'm just saying, I just really, I want to say that, use my voice to, if anybody, young person is listening, yo, just think about what you're doing out there in these geek spaces or whatever. Geek spaces are the same as any other space. It's just a different topic, y'all. Respect yeah. yourself, respect your mind, respect others. And don't, don't seek validation from a certain demographic so bad that you have to sidestep or denigrate your own demographic. I'm and it ain't even about respectability in politics. Just be respectful of yourself and who you are. Well, now nah, I'm going to take it a step further. What's wrong with respect? That's the problem with y'all now. Well, y'all I, trying to make it I, seem like respect is a bad thing. I mean, they, the, they got the, us, the, they got us backpedaling on respectability. You're supposed was, to be respected. Well, that's the way the I think respectability politics that you know not just the concept of respect, that's just what but, the, but the thing is respectability politics is what y'all always especially the older generation always likes to wax poetic about that's what y'all always like to share during february guess what they were on code because there was respectability politics that they all follow now of course there were some fools back then too but for the most part people were on code why? Because there was a level of code, a level of conduct, a level Just of respect that they had on themselves when, and those around them. When I use the word respectability politics, and this is just for me, don't be Clarence Thomas out here. But oh yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> so that's oh that's, yeah, I know, like, I know where like, you coming from. Like if, yeah, if if we're talking about respectability politics, if we're literally we're literally talking about you can't you can't be in you you no matter how intelligent you are no matter how well you present yourself no matter how you speak they will still see you a certain way and so so we i i do yeah i am a complete advocate for carrying yourself respectfully in public but yeah do it it, the 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 issue with respect to ability politics is no matter how you carry yourself in public you can still henry lewis gates was still accosted by a police officer outside of his very home and yeah, so I'll get, I'll get, I see what y'all saying on that. Yeah, the, well, we just so, wanted to. So with that, what I mean yeah, is I mean, more that, respect for one another and yeah, keeping yeah, yeah. ourselves up for each other, not because because so, they don't I, care either. Anyway. I just wanted to throw that out there. I know this is sorry rabbit hole for folks, but we do we say this because no, nah, this is necessary. This is necessary. <laughs> we say I, I this though because we love y'all. Yep, y'all whoever listening, especially if you're a black person. We said it. This is our pods. We can say that. We're free and clear. And and for other people. And we just say that out of love, our respect. 
and different things. So don't if you take it one way, hopefully you leave a comment. Hopefully it's a good comment. Say it. You can say a comment on Blur's podcast. Say it on Mike's YouTube. Right. Well, be careful because I fight. With. Be careful. <laughs> uh, Move yeah. Careful. I don't even I fight. Box. I just I just laugh at you. I just I, I yes. He does. I throw things. hands. But, I love it. So I ain't I will, too old. Will, we go throw it to Mike <laughs> to close out before I get to this pop up. Well, I'll throw matter of fact, Keith got a roll first. So Keith, final thoughts, where can they find you? You can find us at www.blerd-ish.com. Sale coming soon. Uh follow us on blurred period ish. Uh the details for that be coming soon. Next week, if you are in Mobile or on the Gulf Coast of Biloxi, I first event I will be at is uh Mobile Bay Anime Fest. Um, me and uh Dow Noble. We'll be there. Um, then we'll have our own separate tables the next day at the Hancock County uh, Library System Fan Fest in Bay St. Louis. I know it's a mouthful, but they've been wonderful people so far. Uh, that one, I think it's free to come in. They brought it back after COVID. I'm glad it's back. Library cons are dope. Support your local library system. Support your local library con. Small cons are great. Save your money. And you can pass whatever little money you have. You can finally find you some dope without having to pay to get in. So that's right. It's a bonus to it. So um, and then Brown we, Nova got that uh, art for y'all, bro. Hey man, that art with it. One man, his ones. his style is beautiful, y'all. Y'all really need to check Brown Nova out. Hey man, he is a great One Piece fan. Him and Gamma Ray, they're a reason why I don't even mess. I don't, you know, they they love One Piece so genuinely, so nice out here, and want you to enjoy the fandom. I can't even say nothing bad about One Piece no more. I just don't bring it up. It's weird looking, <laughs> but I, I got like the story. They they convinced me to maybe you know try it out once it's wrapped up, whatever it ends. But that's where you can find us. <laughs> if it will ever I, end. I um, appreciate y'all. This has been a great conversation, and hopefully we'll talk some more about Witch from Mercury. Um, I hope I not spoil it for y'all because I know Mike is going to catch up. But once he do, we're going to be on Witch from Mercury. Uh, and probably Hell's Paradise as well, part of our spring lineup. Ed Marshall, yes, that's right. I may you know not go saying? too deep in Marshall every week, but I'm well. Might. See, you could go, you could go as deep as you want because I'm not watching it no way. So you can spoil okay. it all you want. Yeah, if it, you know, I'll try to, I'll try to give y'all a quick wrap up because I read so far ahead to it. I'm just gonna take a break and let it catch up, and hopefully the anime holds up and everything don't get too weird or they don't change it. <laughs> I it has up. potential for weirdness. I can give it that. <laughs> All oh, right, y'all. Look, I, I I haven't watched any of these things, but I'm ju- man, I'm jumping on I'm jumping on Mashal. I'm jumping on Witch from Mercury. Because Witch from Mercury sounds crazy. Man, and this 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 joint um y'all talking about what is it that Y'all, I got COVID brain. Y'all have to forgive me. Uh, Hell's this, Paradise. This, this, Hell's Paradise. Mm. That joint is Suicide Squad anime. That, you ain't got to say no more. I, that, that's probably, I'm jumping on that today. I'll be watching it in the car as I drive. Because I'm dangerous. You know what I'm saying? Don't be too dangerous. But you know what I'm saying? Okay. Go, ahead, I ain't gonna be that go ahead and put the TVs in the headrest, y'all. You know what I'm saying? Put, a, <laughs> put that TV in Shout the bed. Shout out to Manny Fresh. Yep, that's right. <laughs> Who just made a bag. For uh, word, so is a catalog. Word, All right, I congrats, see. congrats, Manuel Fresh. <laughs> Manuel, <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, uh, man, with a, a big shout out to uh, Mr. Fresh, a big shout out to a uh, Mr. Cooper, a big shout out to Mr. Wallace. Yes, I yes. am. N-E-R-D-S-O-U-L, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, podcast, all that jazz. Until the next kill. Until the next revenge. Until the next time you spark up and fire that engine for the Gundam. This is us to y'all saying peace. Peace. Peace.